Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at 7 o'clock p.m. We'd like to certainly welcome all of you that are in attendance with us this evening. If we could just take a moment of silent meditation, please. Thank you. I'm going to ask Councilman Davis if he would lead us in the pledge, please. <coughs> Ask the clerk if she would call the roll, please. Yes. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Here. Council Member Katati. Here. Council Member Davis. Here. Council Member Moffitt. Here. And Council Member Shule. Council Member Brown has an excused absence. Well, we have a, a very pleasant uh, event this evening, as probably most of you know. In fact, I think probably most of you here because of that. Uh, we have young people that are going to be sworn in to the Durham Youth Commission. And they had a reception uh, a little bit earlier prior to this council meeting. And I'm going to ask Ms. Evelyn Scott, the office, uh, director of the Office of Youth, for she will come forth and make introductions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Again, we'd just like to thank um, our parents, um, other supporters, family, and friends, as well as um, City Manager, Mr. Bonfield, and other elected officials. We'd like to thank you all for this opportunity. Again, we are just grateful that you all trust us to work with your kids. And we're going to take the mayor up on his, his plea, and he said that he wanted to see us more involved, and we intend to do that. So look forward to seeing us at the city and the county um, meetings to, again, address some of those issues that are important for youth in Durham. Um, alongside me are Lydia Newman and Anthony Mitchell, and um, we represent the Office on Youth, so we are the ones that will be working this year um, with the students. Thank you. At this time, we're going to go down, I guess, and go ahead and take our oath of office um, by Deputy Clerk Ann Gray. City Clerk Ann Gray. So we're going to have the students, um, they're going to come up to the podium and say their name as they walk down. Um, I'm Zach Meredith. I'm a, a senior at Jordan High School. Um, I'm Lindsay Molina, and I'm a junior at Durham Academy. I'm Kendall Hinton, and I'm a senior at Southern Durham. My name is Michaela Intrican. I'm a junior at the City of Medicine Academy. I'm Jonathan Avery. I'm a senior at K Academy. I'm Kiana Taylor. I'm a senior at Middle College at Durham Tech. Hello, my name is Maya Baker. I'm a freshman that attends Research Triangle Parks. Hi, my name's Bianca Razak. I'm a junior at Jordan High School. Hi, my name is Talia Koptanolu. I'm at DSA as a sophomore. Hi, my name is Maya Reed, and I'm a sophomore at Hillside High School. Hi, my name is Rashawn Bailey, and I'm a sophomore at Hillside High School. Good afternoon. My name is Future Quarter, and I'm a rising junior at Jordan High School. Hello, my name is Kelly Trainum, and I'm a junior at Hillside High School. Hello, my name is Ashanti Asia. I'm a senior at Middle College High School. Hello, my name is Christine Royster, and I'm a junior at Hillside New Tech High School. Good evening. My name is Taylor Walker. I'm a junior at Northern High School. Good evening. My name is Sydney Taylor, and I'm a junior at Hillside High School. Good evening. My name is Tom Brown, and I'm a freshman at Southern Durham. Hello, my name is Matisse Malosh, and I am a 12th grader at Durham School of the Arts. Hello, my name is Olivia Simpson, and I'm a junior at Middle College High School. Hello, I am Elizabeth Elsner. I'm a freshman at Northern High School. 
My name is Jeff Seidel. I'm a senior at Voyager Academy. My name is Keith Beasley, and I'm a senior in the IB program at Hillside High School. hand and repeat after me. I do hereby solemnly affirm that I will support and maintain the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith and that I will faithfully and impartially Discharge the duties of my office as a member of the Durham Youth Commission. Let me ask, are there any announcements by members of the council? I recognize Councilman Shul and Mayor Pro Tem. Mr. Mayor, uh, two things real quickly. One, uh, it seems from the Youth Commission members that the bow tie is back in fashion. <laughs> and uh, there perhaps is a youth movement that we all ought to maybe take some note of. Uh, that was a great looking bunch of young people. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, the, our Parks and Rec Department had a, a terrific event at Red Maple Park uh, that they had planned for quite a while, the Recreation Advisory Commission as well. Red Maple Park uh, is, a, is, a, is a park off of East Club Boulevard, it's one of our be most beautiful natural areas uh, in terms of our parks, absolutely gorgeous. But it is a park that has fallen into some disrepair and uh, some disuse. And the neighbors gathered uh, under the auspices of Parks and Rec the Recreation Advisory Committee was there. They were surveyed. There were probably 30 or four members of the, of the uh, neighborhood there. And um, our Deputy City Manager, Bo Ferguson, was there, along with uh, many people from our Parks and Rec Department. And, and I was just very, I was really proud of both our staff uh, and the way the community responded. I think it's really going to make a big difference. And I think that park's going to come back in, in a great way. And uh, just wanted to express appreciation for, for that. And, and, uh, for all, especially for all of our city staff who were there and did such a good job. Thanks, Councilman Shule. and recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Good evening. I was blessed this morning at 8 o'clock <laughs> to attend a great celebration, and it was the uh, Food Bank of Central and Eastern North Carolina received a $300,000 grant from um, Bayer, what is it? Sci crop science, crop science uh, for the backpack program. And so that is another step toward assuring that our children have food to eat on the weekends. It was well attended and um, we really appreciate what Bear Crop Science has done for this community. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, for sharing that information. Are there any other announcements? If not, we'll proceed with the agenda. Uh, first being the consent agenda items, which may be approved. I'm, I'm sorry. We have prior items by the city manager, city attorney, city clerk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Uh, had uh, three priority items for this evening's agenda. Agenda item number seven, the Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. Uh, there was a, a couple of uh, changes and corrections to the issues and analysis section of the agenda memo. 
Agenda no items number 18 and 19, the consolidated annexation Joven Northeast Creek and the consolidated annexation 1307 Old Oxford Road. Uh, both of those uh, items have the, um, uh, some modifications to the recommendation uh, and a required uh, consistency statement that's now required under state law uh, as per the uh, direction from the city attorney in uh, item 18 that's attachment number 14 item 19 it's attachment number 13 uh, mr. Baker I'm sure could answer any questions you have about that and finally I did want to uh, indicate uh, for the record that uh, we have uh, posted the city managers report in response to the recommendations from the Human Relations Commission and the Civilian Police Review Board uh, which will be presented to the City Council at Thursday's work session uh, that has been uh, posted uh, to the agenda uh, on the, uh, the the regular website where the agenda is and also uh, it is available on the City Manager's uh, web page on our uh, or the home page on uh, the website so uh, it will be available uh, for anyone who wants to review it download it print it whatsoever effective immediately thank you <laughs> a lot okay entertain a motion on the city manager's prior guidance I'm gonna probably move in second madam clerk will you open the vote close the vote it passes six to zero uh, next the city attorney prior guidance thank you mr. mayor no priority items uh, likewise city clerk yes mr. mayor members of the council I have uh, three items uh, I'd like to introduce the city council to our newest uh, member in the clerk's office the deputy city clerk Diana Schreiber, she comes with us from the city of Greensboro, North Carolina. In addition, Mr. Mayor, um, we have with us this evening Leah Wyatt, who was recently appointed to the Citizens Advisory Committee, and Latasha Wilson, who was recently appointed to the Durham Homeless Services Advisory Committee. Uh, they are here this evening to be sworn in before the city council. If you come forth with the clerk. I, Leah Denise Wyatt, do hereby solemnly swear, do hereby solemnly swear that, I will support and maintain, that I will support and maintain the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith, and that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of my office discharge the duties of my office as a member of the citizens advisory committee as a member of the citizens advisory committee so help me God so help me God thank you Latasha Wilson. I, Latasha Wilson. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and laws of North Carolina. The Constitution of laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of my office. Discharge the duties of my office. As a member of the Durham Homeless Service Advisory Committee. As a member of the Durham Homeless Service Advisory Committee. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Let me say to both of the young ladies who have been appointed, uh, we certainly appreciate the fact that you've chosen to volunteer your services uh, for these very important committees. Uh, we, we recognize that there's a certain amount of time that's, that's required with that, but uh, we would ask if there is anything that 
either this council or administration can do and help them discharge your duties. Don't, don't hesitate to call upon us. And again, congratulations and thanks for being willing to serve. We'll now proceed with the agenda. <clears throat> the first item is the consent agenda items, and consent agenda items may be approved with a single motion. If an item is removed either by a council person or a member of the public, uh, it is discussed later in the program. Uh, and I will just read the heading of each one of the consent agenda items. Uh, first is item one is Durham Homeless Services Advisory Committee appointment, which is just done. Item two, is, I'm sorry, item two is the Crime Statistics Performance Audit, June 2014. Item three is the Overtime Follow-up Performance Audit. Item two is being pulled, uh, June 2014. Item four is the Utility Extension Agreement with Bauer Merricks, Inc. Traven. Item five is the Utility Extension Agreement with Angel and Marveline Orlando to serve 602 Pleasant Drive, this is water only. Item six is the city code revision of the right of way ordinance, chapter 62, article two, division one of the city of Durham code of ordinances. Item seven is the Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. Item eight is Munis Software Annual Support and License Agreement for 2015. Item nine is agreement with Time Warner Cable Business Class to provide metropolitan area network services to the city of Durham. We'll pull that item. Item 10 is generator maintenance and emergency repair services, service contract. Item 11 is pipeline agreements with North Carolina Railroad Company and Norfolk Southern Railway Company for the downtown loop waterline replacement construction contract. I entertain a motion for the approval of consent agenda items with the exception of items nine and items two. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. We'll move to the general business agenda, public hearings. Item 13 is a public hearing on proposed contracts between Argos Therapeutics, Inc. and the City of Durham regarding incentives for capital investment within the city limits. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council, uh, staff. I'm Kevin Dick with the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. And I'm pleased this evening um, to have the opportunity to present a proposed economic development incentive agreement between the city and Argos Therapeutics Incorporated. Um, a bit about uh, Argos. Argos, Thera Argos Therapeutics, excuse me, is a biopharmaceutical company focused on the development and commercialization of treatments for cancer and other infectious diseases. They currently employ approximately 100 workers and they are located in Northern Durham. They recruit talent from local universities such as NCCU's Bright Program and they're a very community focused uh, company and they make uh, annual donations uh, to, the, to food drives that are uh, directed by Durham and Eastern North Carolina food banks. A bit about the project. The project would consist of $40.9 million of capital investment uh, by 2017. Also, the city's proposed incentive, pay, uh, is incentive payment would be uh, $924,676 over a seven-year period, and that is to be matched by the county. The projected capital improvements are slated to yield $1.7 million in new tax value over a 10-year period. Uh, based upon a build to suit facility that would be located uh, at an, a site on Alexand 2W Alexander Drive. This site is ex expected to be approximately 100,000 square feet and would consist of headquarters, manufacturing, and research and development. Over 100 positions, uh, additional positions, uh, are expected to be created by 2017 with a total of 236 um, to be created by 2018 at an average wage of over $90,000. The job mix is diverse and includes scientific and technical positions, administrative, research and development. You can see the uh, specific positions uh, at the bottom of the slide. 
as, as it relates to um, compatibility with our existing economic development policy and our uh, focus on industries, this project is, is very compatible. The targeted occupational types within the biopharmaceutical industry include research and development, biopharmaceutical production, and manufacturing. And we have um, representatives uh, here from, from Durham Technical Community College that can speak to um, some of the, um, the training that's the short-term training that's offered at Durham Tech that can, comp that can prepare individuals um, for positions at, at Argos. And I mentioned earlier that the NCCU Bright Center has produced interns uh, for Argos in the past and uh, stands ready to also be a source for their hiring um, through the Career Center system. And these targeted occupational types, as I said, are consistent with the policy that was approved by Council on April 10th, 2014. Total incentive package, as I said, 924,676 to be paid over seven years. Uh, there is a slated county match. The county approved um, a similar incentive at their July 28th uh, public hearing. And that's a 100% match based upon the creation of the uh, jobs number, the job number that I stipulated earlier. There, there would be precedents um, related to the agreement. One is that uh, Argos would agree to a workforce development agreement that would um, uh, stipulate their use of the Durham Career Center as a source for hiring. Uh, and we have begun having discussions with Argos um, uh, on that basis. Incentive payments subject to the verification of capital investment. As I said, over $40.9 million in capital investment within uh, three years of city council approval. So within three years of, of this evening, if the agreement were to be approved. Argos would have to provide the city with um, expenditure documentation uh, of the aforementioned, the aforementioned capital investment amounts. And they would also need to execute a Durham-based business plan that would show uh, good faith efforts for hiring um, Durham-based contractors, including minority and women-owned businesses. And we would work with the company to establish good faith goals prior to um, the execution of an agreement. Why is an incentive necessary? The dollars are needed uh, to make this corporate expansion take place in Durham because um, there was uh, serious counter offers um, from Mebane and Orange County to the tune of over $3.1 million. And by state statute, um, retaining the company here um, when there is a significant um, chance of the company moving elsewhere um, is reason to offer an incentive. Durham County, as I said, approved their matching incentive on July 28th. The combined offer would be over 1.8 million and um, on the job training grants may be offered to the company based upon them hiring um, Durham Career Center uh, system registrants. And this would provide those registrants with uh, stronger opportunities for job placement. Again, the city would gain um, $40.9 million in capital investment from, um, and basically in a brand new facility. Um, and approximately 1.7 uh, million in projected new tax revenues, as well as the creation of jobs. Why does, this Dur why does this deal make sense for the Durham taxpayers? Well, firstly, Durham would be retaining a company that is creating highways, jobs, and growth industries. And secondly, research and development, manufacturing, and biopharmaceuticals are among the job categories we covet. That concludes the presentation, and, but before taking questions, I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence um, of Mr. Jeff Abbey, President and CEO of Argos Therapeutics, uh, Randall Goller, who is Director of Facilities, and uh, Fred Misowitz. Uh, Fred, what's your title? He's the Chief Operating Officer. And I'd um, like to acknowledge their presence here tonight and take any questions if uh, that pleases the Council. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Staff uh, presentation, uh, I would ask first, are there comments by members of the council on this item? We do have one person that indicated they wanted to speak as part of the public hearing. Uh, I recognize Ted Connor, and I would ask is that anyone else that wants to speak on this item, Ted, you can come forward on this item, this being a public hearing item. Well, good evening, Mayor Bell, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. 
Cole McFadden and members of the Durham City Council. Uh, I am excited to be here this evening. Uh, this is an exciting night for Durham and hopefully for Argus Therapeutics. I'd like to once again thank Jeff, uh, Fred, and Randall for, for being with us tonight. It's exciting to have you here and hopefully uh, exciting for you to enjoy the palpable support for your company. Uh, the Durham Chamber of Commerce is here tonight uh, to speak our, for our support for Argus Therapeutics uh, expansion in Durham. Their expansion offers an excellent return on investment to the city of Durham with respect to new jobs, a broad range of jobs, new tax base, support for a Durham-born company using technology that came from Duke University, growth of our flourishing life sciences cluster, and bringing positive recognition to our community. Moreover, and most importantly, each day 180 new patients are diagnosed with renal cancer, and it is humbling to know that the personalized immunotherapy treatment that could save these patients' lives and lessen their suffering will be developed and hopefully deployed from Durham, North Carolina. In fact, Argos will be the first company providing true personalized immunotherapies for the treatment of renal cancer. Due to the company's technology platform, Durham will become the epicenter for personalized immunotherapy serving patients nationally and I hope ultimately globally. To help our residents become prepared for work at companies such as Argos, Durham Technical Community College has added two new training programs in the past year and is adding a third program funded through a grant from Duke Energy. Joining us tonight is uh, Dr. Peter Woolridge, Vice President for Corporate and Continuing Education, who supervises the college's industry training programs. I always like for, for Dr. Woolridge to see how important it is uh, to provide the training for our Durham residents at these companies. All of these programs that Durham Tech provides aligns well with the technology Argos will be using in their manufacturing process or production process. The quest to support Argus Therapeutics growth in Durham started a long time ago, back in 2011, and it has been a long and very circuitous journey. But with the City of Durham's support tonight, Argos will hopefully select Durham as its permanent home. But I will say that with Durham's support for Argos, uh, it is absolutely important for, for, the Durham, for the City of Durham to uh, provide their support for Argos, and I think in the end it will be support for all of us. Thank you. Ted, are there any other persons that want to speak on this item? This is a public hearing. Come forward and state your name and address, please. You have two minutes. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was, um, I'm Mrs. Peterson, Victoria Peterson. I was looking in the book at their report at the information that was submitted to the City Council. I do not see at all a racial breakdown of this company. Uh, where's Kevin at? Okay. Uh, maybe he can come back. I would like to know what the racial breakdown is. I'm, I am one of the political activists here in Durham, and I've been trying to watch over the last several years to make sure that African Americans are employed in this community. And this looks like this is a very nice industry and not a very nice field. Um, we have the Durham, uh, the Durham Medical Academy and we have some other areas that um, uh, hoping that this company will draw from to make sure that they have a racially diverse. Uh, I'm not ashamed uh, to advocate for African Americans in this community. Uh, this state for years have had a, a, a history and as I go back and, and do my research, it still has a, a, a history of discriminating against persons of color. We've got to make sure that our young men and women in this community are employed. And I'm not speaking about all of the other minorities. Nowadays, everybody's a minority. I'm speaking about persons of color, the African American community. We've got to make sure that our young men or being employed in this community. So if there is some way that this company, oh, and another thing, I did not see how many persons in Durham are already working for this company or out there, in the, um, out there in the research triangle. I think that that's something that we need to start, start asking these companies. If you say that, and I'm gonna be speaking on another one, if you say that you have 600 um, males um, uh, that are working for you, well, I would like to know how many of those 600 males live and work in Durham. So I think we've got to start, Mr. Mayor, getting some better statistical information on exactly uh, after these companies get started, after they get their monies, 
how many of them of Durham residents they have employed. And thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. You're quite welcome, Ms. Peterson. And maybe, um, Kevin. Just a minute, Ms. Peterson. Kevin will respond to that, but that information is a part of the report that we have. Well, I'm telling you, it is. And uh, I don't know if Kevin wants to speak to it. It says approximately 25, 25 to 30 percent of the workers at Argos are Durham residents, and the demographic profile of the workforce is 17 percent non Caucasian, 58 percent female, 58 percent are age four or above, and blah, 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 blah. So that information is available, but we appreciate you raising the question. Let me ask other, is there anyone else that wants to speak to this item, this item being a public hearing? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing. I, I do have a question since it was, it was raised. Uh, assume that the council approves this, what, what assurances do we have that Argos is going to make a decision come to Durham? I've heard about Burlington elements and et cetera. So what, what, well, I'd I like somebody to speak to that. <laughs> okay. Well, I, and I'll defer to uh, the representatives from Argos with uh, any more detail than this, but I mean, we've been given assurance that um, based upon the amount that we've proposed to them, uh, their board has uh, made a choice to stay in Durham. Um, they believe that the, uh, the, the dollar amount that we counter offered with combined with the um, proximity to talent, airports, amenities, um, just made, and, and just Durham's rep reputation um, and its collection of biopharmaceutical companies um, and its, its reputation really with the financing community as um, a place where um, biopharmaceutical companies, high growth, high technology type companies um, congregate uh, more so than Medbin. So. Do the officers care to speak to that? Yes, sir. You can come to the podium, please. Thank you for coming on. Hi, I'm Jeff Abbey. I'm the president and CEO of Argos. Yeah, so right now all we're waiting on is a decision from the state regarding our incentive package. Uh, but as Kevin said, uh, we went to the board and um, uh, we looked at the Durham proposal and the Mebbin proposal. And even though the Mebbin was financially more attractive, we felt for the company, given that uh, we already have 100 people employed here in Durham and we don't want to upset that, uh, by changing uh, their uh, commute in a negative direction. Uh, if, uh, if we get what we're asking for from the state, which we expect to know in the next couple weeks, uh, we plan to stay in Durham. Thank you. I, it was important to ask that question since it had been raised as a part of the public record, and we appreciate your response. Yeah, and I, I just want to thank uh, Durham, uh, Kevin and Ted in particular, but the city and the county for the support of Argos. Uh, we, as both Ted and Kevin said, have been Durham located since the beginning, since the spin out of Duke, uh, and we want to remain Durham located as we become a commercial, fully integrated uh, company, uh, revenue generating and profitable in the future. Thank Thanks. You. I, I would say this, this council in particular uh, has, has worked very hard to try to make this a very business friendly environment to not only through incentives, but other quality of life efforts to attract companies such as yourselves and uh, the quality of product that you're involved in. So we appreciate the fact that you're leaning towards making that decision. And uh, once this council makes a final decision, then we leave it up to the state and hopefully you'll come back in two to three weeks and tell us you're here. Great, thanks uh, Mr. Mayor. I recognize Councilman Shule and Councilman Moffitt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I wanna just, uh, Second, what the mayor says, we're really glad that you all are planning to be here. Uh, these are great jobs with great pay, and uh, that's really that's really important to us. And uh, so that's that's great, and I'm certainly planning to support this. I do have a couple of questions for Kevin. Um, Kevin, uh, about the incentive, uh, the incentive $924,000 looks like 75% of the taxes we're taking over the first seven years of the of the deal is is that is that did I get that right? It's it's actually just about seventy two percent. The new tax with the new tax rate would okay. be about seventy two. All right. And is that within our guidelines for this? Yes. Okay. Um, the um, the twenty five to thirty percent Durham workers, I know that we uh, and I'm and I'm I'm really addressing this as much to folks at Argos as I am to you, Kevin, but uh, we are 
we all know that people cross a triangle all the time to go to jobs and work in different places, uh, but I'm really glad to see that we have a Durham-based business plan, and I'm hoping that we can up that percentage. Uh, we, are, uh, we are happy to uh, be financially supportive in this way, uh, but at the same time, it's really important to us that you all make a, a significant effort to employ Durham residents, and so I'm, I'm glad to see the plan, but I, I hope that you all will be doing that. So I just want to urge you to do that. Uh, and then, Kevin, I wanted to ask about the uh, Youth Works internship. Is that part of the business plan as that well? Is, that is part of the Durham Workforce Plan, yes. I thought so. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Shule. recognize Councilman Moffitt. Yes, um, I had just a couple of questions. I had one for Mr. Well, two, actually, for Mr. Abbey. The first one is, are you, are you all out in Treyburn today? Is that what I understand? Pardon? Are you no, we're out uh, off Roxborough Road, uh, off Ben Franklin, in that medical park that's out there. Okay. Um, and then uh, the uh, incentives you're talking about from the state, do you anticipate that the state may off might offer you different incentives for Mebane than for Durham? Uh, yeah, actually, we will have less incentives uh, in Durham than we would have had in Mebane uh, because of programs like Golden Leaf and things that are based on uh, which county and whether right. it's considered more needy in terms of job development. Right, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I would just like to thank the company and Kevin for reaching out to North Carolina Central University because we really have some bright students in every sense of the word. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I, I thank you. I, we've been thrilled with uh, the recruitment. I think we've added um, almost 50 jobs in the last uh, 16 months or so, uh, with a lot of that coming directly from Durham residents and, and students here, so that's why we want to stay. <laughs> well, that, that's a good point. I had the... Um new director of the Wright Center in my office um, a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about his plans and who he's talking to and hopefully how he's hoping to get Wright more involved in pharmaceutical uh, companies around here. So it's good to hear that the conversation is going on. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, and I, I think it's worth noting that we were heavily recruited uh, by states of Florida, Texas, and the province of Quebec, all of which offered more money than the state of North Carolina is offering us. Uh, but because we have over 100 employees here in Durham today who are incredibly well trained and incredibly important to our success and we feel like this is the best place for us to grow and become a commercially successful company, we turn down, we plan to turn down uh, more, <laughs> more money from those other locations than what we're getting here because we think it's important for us to stay here. Any further discussions, comments by council? Not entertain a motion on the item. It's been proper to move and second. Any further questions here? And then call the question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. Thank you very much. It passes six to zero. Quite welcome. Thank you. Let's move to the next item. Item 14, street closing, South Miami, Boule Miami Boulevard, street closing 14-00010. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Um, before I start my presentation, I can first certify that all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with the provisions of law, and uh, affidavits are on file to that effect with the Planning Department. First case before you tonight is SC 14-00010. It's a requested street closing um, of a segment of South Miami Boulevard. Uh, the applicant is Eden's Land Corporation, and they are proposing to close a 3,585 square foot segment of South Miami Boulevard. Uh, this right-of-way segment is currently open, but it's not used for vehicular traffic. Uh, the request has been reviewed by 20 city departments and public service agencies, and no negative impacts were identified associated with the proposed right-of-way closure. Uh, so I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. This is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. I would ask other questions first by member of the, members of the council. Uh, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on this item? 
let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Madam Speaker, for the council. Yeah, yeah. Proper move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Move to item 15, street closing, Belmont Drive, street closing 14-0008. Uh, good evening again, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Pat Young with the planning department. This application is by Stewart Incorporated, proposing to close two separate segments of a Belmont Drive, uh, totaling approximately 7,035 square feet. Um, this right-of-way segment is currently open, but is uh, not used by vehicular traffic and has been reviewed by 20 city agencies and public service um, departments uh, outside of the, uh, also including departments outside of the city, uh, and no negative impacts to the proposed right-of-way closure were identified. Uh, so staff recommends approval. I'll be happy to take any questions. Again, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. You've heard the staff report. I would ask the comments by members of the council. If not, we had one person that has signed up to speak on this item, Mike Tarrant. Is he available? So you have three minutes. Good evening, Mary Bell, members of the city council. Uh, my name is Mike Tarrant. I reside at 2205 Caroline Drive in Durham. Uh, I'm here representing Stewart as the applicant for the, uh, the application before you now and would be happy to answer any questions that you may have pertaining, pertaining to the, uh, the current request. Thank you. Are there questions by members of the council of the applicant? Uh, is there anyone in the public that wants to speak on this item? Uh, let the re record reflect that no one else is asked to speak on this item. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Madam Speaker, for the council. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Move to item 17. 16. 16. 16. Street closing, Dodson Street, street closing 14009. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Pat Young with the planning department. This is a uh, companion to the previous item, request by Stewart Incorporated to close approximately 199. 0.81 linear feet of Dodson Street. Um, the cur current, the currently, this segment of right of way is open but not used by vehicular traffic. Has been reviewed by 20 city departments and outside agencies with no negative impacts identified. So staff recommends uh, approval of the requested road closure. I'll be happy to take any questions. Again, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. You've heard the staff report. Are there questions by members of the council of the staff report? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item? This being a public hearing. Uh, let the record reflect no one in the audience has to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Madam Speaker, for the council. No. It's been a property move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Open the vote. Uh, for some reason, my signal isn't. Okay. You close the vote. You want, you want us to reset it? Okay. Reset. Can you open it? Close it. I, I it passes you, six to zero. Thank you. Uh, the next one is item 17, street closing, Waterbury Drive, street closing 14-0006. Uh, good evening again, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young. It's our final street closing tonight, SC 14-00006. Um, Robert Murphy is the applicant. He proposes to close 160.3 linear feet of Waterbury Drive. Uh, this is a right-of-way segment that is currently open but uh, not used by vehicular traffic. Uh, neither the NCDOT, the City of Durham Transportation Department, or any of the other 18 review agencies identified any negative impacts with the proposed closing. Um, I will quickly note that at one time this was uh, identified as a potential access location for Sandy Creek Park, but the Department of Parks and Recreation had, uh, indicated that it would be infeasible to install a, uh, a, a uh, access point at this location. So staff recommends approval. I'd be happy to take any questions. And this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. We've heard the staff report on this item. Are there questions by members of the council? Is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak on this item? This item 18, consolidated taxation. Let the record reflect no one in the public asked to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes six to zero. 
Move to item 19, consolidated annexation 1307 Old Oxford Road. Mr. Mayor, the previous item was 17. We need to act on item 18. Eighteen Jovan Northeast Creek annexation. Right. I'm Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry about. That. Yep. Um, Pat Young again with the Planning Department. This is a request, uh, a consolidated utility extension, voluntary annexation, and initial zoning request for approximately 177 uh, acres at the northeast quadrant of the intersection of Ellis Road and, and Durham Freeway. Um, the portions of this property uh, were zoned. Um, by the county in 2000, June of 2006 uh, to the same requested designation that is, is before you tonight, um, which is to uh, plan unit development or PUD 4.840 um, and uh, co um, commercial general with, with the development plan, um, residential suburban 20 uh, and industrial light D. Uh, what, what this would allow for is a maximum of 676 residential units if approved. Um, the utility extension agreement has been requested to serve this development. Uh, the Public Works Department has performed a utility impact analysis and uh, determined that adequate water and sewer capacity is available. A voluntary position for non-contiguous annexation has been submitted and a fiscal impact analysis has been completed by the Budget Management Service Department and they have uh, estimate, projected that revenues would be positive uh, more than expenses at the time of annexation. And staff recommends uh, consideration and approval of the trans translational zoning from the county designation as it's consistent with the future land use map. Um, I will make one additional note. Um, attachment 7, section H, uh, table 4, identifies projected school impacts. Um, there is an error in that uh, report. The, uh, the projected impacts of, of student generation are the same as they were under the county designation, and that's um, a total of uh, 122 students. So uh, staff recommends that the city council adopt the extension agreement, um, voluntary annexation and zoning map change uh, and the associated consistency statement. As the manager noted at the outset, uh, a recent change through uh, NC Court of Appeals uh, requires that a separate motion be made for the uh, consistency statement with a comprehensive plan. So there'll be two separate motions. The first is associated with voluntary annexation the utility extension agreement and the initial zoning and the second is uh, for the consistency with the comp plan. I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay, again, this is a public hearing. I would ask for their comments by members of the council and recognize Councilman Shule. Question, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, page five of the memo under inspections, could you explain about the street impact fee credits Um, so, Mr. Mr. Shul, I, the inspections department often um, accepts cre issues credits for construction of roadway in lieu of payments into the impact uh, into the impact fee fund. I would need to have someone from the inspections department come and give additional detail, but I know there are guidelines and procedures where credits can be authorized uh, under certain circumstances where there's an equivalent amount of construction made to the what the fee would be. So just so I understand, do you mean that the credits are against what their expenses for our inspections would be? I mean, is it, is it, is it what, what is the credit? You know, how, what form is it in? So, yeah, the, the fee that's identified here looks like it pertains to the parks and recreation and open space fee. Do you want to speak to that, Rob? I'm going to let Rob Joyner talk in a little more detail about that. Robert Joyner, Public Works Department. Um, it, the impact fees are collected for parks and rec, open space, and also street impact fees. The street impact fees for transportation are essentially if you go out and construct road improvements associated with your project, uh, those road improvements have a certain price tag that are associated with it, and those impact fees uh, can then be offset as a result of that. The, the purpose of those street impact fees is simply to uh, have developers pay for yeah. their improvements sure. over time and, and other improvements that might be made for the general area. Okay, so so they're building their own they're building roads which are 
Are they building a road? Is that how they're getting the they're, credit? They're building improvements, off-site improvements, uh, turn lanes and other things okay. that will be associated Got it. with. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Are there other questions by members of the council? Are there questions by members of the public on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public asked to speak on this item. I would declare the public hearing to be closed. The matter is back to the council. And I understand we've got two motions to make on this. Move the first part of it. It's been properly moved and second. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes six to zero. Uh, entertain another motion on item. Second motion to adopt the consistency statement as required by, sorry, as required by NCGS 160A-383. It's been properly moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. We'll now move to Consolidated Annexation 1307 Old Oxford Road. Thank you, Mr. Member, uh, Mayor, and members of the Council. Pat Young again with the Planning Department. Um, this is, uh, as the Mayor said, 1307 Old Oxford Road. It's a utility extension agreement, voluntary annexation agreement, and initial zoning for a 1.33 acre portion of an existing property at 1307 Old Oxford Road uh, from its current zoning designation of IL in the county to IL in the city. Um, utility extension agreement has been requested. Um, has been reviewed by Public Works Department and determined that adequate sewer and water capacity exists at the site. Uh, a voluntary petition for non-contiguous uh, annexation has been submitted and uh, has found to be fiscally uh, revenue positive by the Budget Management Services Department. Um, and finally, the uh, initial zoning of IL is consistent with the future land use designation and the existing zoning in the county uh, and would allow the uh, projected use, which would be expansion of an existing self-service uh, storage facility at the site. Uh, so we would uh, recommend that the, the two separate motions be considered and approved by council and be happy to take any questions. Again, you've heard the staff report. Uh, the public hearing is open. I would ask other questions by members of the council first on the staff report. Uh, if not, are there members in the audience that would like to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the audience has to speak on the item. Uh, the clerk of the public hearing to be closed. Matter of for the council. It's been properly moved and second. That's on the first part. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes six to zero. Entertain a motion. Is that a second? Yes. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? It Clerk. passes six to zero. Okay, we'll move back to the items that have been pulled. Well, I've got the planning department up here. I read an article in the NLO, of course it's dangerous when you read articles and mm -hmm. follow them, but talking about bus stops and saying it takes a year to get a bus stop done in, in Durham. Re read the article. Transportation. Yeah, transportation. Yeah. TTA was yeah. the one that was saying that. Yeah. Say, I, okay, we need to talk to TTA and I'll talk to them if that's not true. Okay, uh, the item that was pulled was item two. Are you, you going to comment on that? Yeah. Sorry, Jermaine. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, we, we've been in conversation with TTA. Um, we do have a requirement if, if these are on, pub, on, on private property that they go through the regular approval process. And we've been working with them assiduously to try to make sure they understand the requirements and that it's as streamlined as possible. So we'll continue to do that. Thank you for re referencing us to the article. Item two, crime statistics of pool by Ms. Peterson. Do you have a comment? Yes, Mr. Mayor and City Council members, I just wanted just to share some information quickly here. Um, I, I really wish that the crime statistic information had given a little breakdown of, um, of uh, actually how many persons uh, the, Durham, uh, the Durham police officers have arrested, and as well as the youth. There was one thing in the crime statistic, Mr. Davis, that you really may would be interested in. It's, it does not give a report on the youth. Several weeks ago, I have been really very concerned about something that is going on in the Durham County Jail, about so many of our youth under the age of 18 
that is being placed in the Durham County Jail. The majority of those young men and women are coming from the African American community. I have been told, and Mr. Baker, you really need to, I'm hoping that you will also look into this. There is no education going on for these kids that are under the age of 18. Uh, the school system is actually in violation of Title IX and Title 30. Um, just because these kids have been accused of committing a crime, not one of them have been found guilty of anything. And their education should still continue if our Durham City Police officers and, and the Durham Sheriff officers, if they are going to be arresting them and treating them like adults, they are still entitled. And Mr. Baker and Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Davis and Mr. Baker and his other city council members, please really look into this. The statistical, I thought the report here, what they put together was good, but there was really no breakdown. And the other day, and matter of fact, I just got this from the Sheriff Department. Uh, they have uh, uh, 26 of our youth under the age of 18 in the Durham County Jail. They have about 22 persons in the Durham County Jail that have been there well over a year. They've got some there, Mr. Mayor, at least two years. That just is not good. I wish I had another minute, but anyway. But thank you very much. So thank I wanted you for, to talk a little Thank bit. you for making the comments, and I'm sure it'll get passed on to the sheriff. I don't know if Ms. Burrington wants yeah, to comment I, on Mr. that. Mr. Mayor, if I could just ask Ms. Burrington just to confirm, as Peterson certainly you know, says what she says, but the purpose of this agenda item was really about the, the audit services department conducting an audit of the crime statistics to be sure that the statistics that are being reported are accurate and, and you know com complete. So Jermaine, could you please just quickly run, explain what, what you do and what this was different than I think than what we might normally see with a, a Yes, uh, sir. Uh, good evening, Mayor statistics. Bell, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Cole LaFadden, City Council members, Jermaine Bruinton, Director of uh, the Audit Services Department. As uh, our city manager stated, the the purpose of this audit was to look at the, the process around the reporting of crime statistics, uh, not the, the specific breakdown of the, uh, the statistics. And um, the, so, uh, you know, we may have some of that data in the uh, field work that we have, but the purpose of this audit was to look at the accuracy or controls around the actual reporting of those statistics once they actually get into the system. So item, Mr. Peterson, you might as well say there was item nine, Time Warner. Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't right. would, uh, the item is to accept the report. Yes. It's like a motion. Uh, it's been proper to move and second. Item. Second. It's been proper to move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote and close the vote? It passes six to zero. Thank, Thank you, you. Council. Ms. Peterson, you had item nine, Time Warner. You have two minutes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can I? Have another minute, please. Usually it's three minutes. Well, you can have another minute, Ms. Peterson. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Uh, Mr. Mayor and city council members, uh, several years ago, I myself and several other individuals here in Durham uh, worked with quite a few of our Durham residents. And Mr. Baker helped us. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Um, the young man also helped us. We're training in copper cable and fiber optic as well as the, our, our um, IT director. One of the things we found out, even though Time Warner came to us and they committed to hire our young men and women, and when it was all said and done, those persons who had criminal records were not hired. Those persons who did not have criminal records, they were hired, and that's good. But what I'm seeing going on in my community, particularly in the African American community, and also, Mr. Mayor, we had another murder on my street in walking distance to McDougal Terrace. We had two young men, 17 and 18, this past Sunday that was also shot. Sunday before last, we had a young man that was murdered. We've got to do something in this community to help these young men to get out of crime, get out of selling drugs. Even after they try to get themselves together, even after they're trained, Mr. Mayor and City Council members, these companies still will not hire them. And I know a little bit about copper cable and fiber optic. Yes, some of that work you have to go in to a person's home. But a lot of that work, Mr. Mayor, you do not have to go into a person's home. 
And for Time Warner, I looked on here, I think they have about, what, four or 500 African Americans that they have hired. There's no breakdown of those Durham residents because Time Warner is all over the state, my understanding. They're just not in Durham. And I think that's good that they're hiring. But still, again, Mr. Mayor, and I've been coming up here for a few years, I have not seen not one report after we give these companies monies, not one report has come back to say, well, mayor and city council members, we have hired 30 Durham residents. We've hired 200 Durham residents. I keep hearing from different folks, well, Mrs. Peterson, we just can't give that kind of information. But they come here, they want our contracts, they want our monies, but we cannot get at least a very minor report, uh, Mr. City Manager, of how many of our Durham residents, how many African American men, how many African American women are being hired? One of the reports, one of the groups just stayed here about what? 17% were non-whites that was hired. Well, well, really, what is that really saying? That doesn't say anything to me about the African American community. And let me not give too much drama here. We have a history in this country this country was made on the backs of black folks, of my ancestors. This state was also. We've got to start being accountable Thank to the African-American community Thank you. Thank you, and to make sure that they're getting employment, Mr. Mayor. Thank and you. thank you very much, and very other welcome. council members. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess, just for the record, now I, there's a statement in this memo that speaks about SDB summary. And it says, the Equal Opportunity Equity Department reviewed the bid submitted by Time Warner Cable Business tri Class Triangle Business Unit and has determined that they are in compliance with the ordinance to promote equal opportunities in city contracting. And uh, I won't go much beyond that. Uh, it does give a breakdown of the workforce that's with Time that's Warner. Of course, they're located in Marsville, North Carolina, that's and right, that's, that's available also. I'm going to recognize uh, someone on the council. I thought I Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I share your concern, Ms. Peterson, and I know that we all do about the employment of African Americans, but in this case, I think when you, when you take a close look at this item, you'll see that over 50% of the employees of Time Warner are African American, of this t division of Time Warner. You're talking about 1,800 people and 51% of them. No, it's not statewide. It doesn't in this area, and 51% of them are African Americans. So I understand your concern, but I think in this particular case, I think we can be unusually happy with the number of African Americans that this company has hired to do this work. Thank you, Mr. But Mayor. it is statewide, Mr. Mayor, and I was just asking, can we just get a report? If you're going to give them the contract, can Ms. they Ms. come Ms. back Peter, with Ms. a Peter, report Ms. Peterson, of how many? Ms. Peterson, I don't, I don't want to debate that here. Uh, the information is available in terms of the employment. And in terms I just of fact, wanted you to know. Well, I, I know because I'm reading the report. Thank you. But what I was other, saying, are there other, other comments on this item? I was going to say. I'm going to recognize the mayor pro tem. I'm going to change my mind and ask that we move the item. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Okay. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? You close the vote. It passes 6 to 0. Okay. Uh, are there other items that need to come before the council? If not, the meeting's adjourned. Before I adjourn the meeting, I just want to remind the council persons that are co chairs of these task forces that we've got a meeting Wednesday, the 20th, at 5 o'clock at um, Love and Respect on Andrew Avenue. And we're asking if you can get your survey questions in. That would be helpful. Any other items? Not me. Okay, thank you. The meeting's adjourned at 8.03 p.m.